Salutations, respected viewers. This is George from Ireland. Here I am in front of uh, Ernest Shackleton's house in Sydenham, London. So uh, Shackleton was born in 1874. He was Irish. His father had come here to uh, study medicine. His father qualified as a doctor and they're very well to do. You can see this uh, handsome and spacious house, which was just for their family, um, because doctors were very well remunerated in those days. So uh, Shackleton went to Dulwich College, which was nearby. He then became an officer in the Royal Navy, a very respectable, though not lucrative, career. And he was interested in polar exploration from an early stage. He knew um, uh, Robert Scott, who's rather better known as Scott of the Antarctic. And um, uh, Shackleton famously went on an expedition to the uh, South Pole shortly before the First World War. Um, but it was not um, uh, Scott's ill-fated uh, race to the South Pole. Um, so uh, it all went wrong for Shackleton and he had to abandon the plan when his tr ship was stuck in pack ice and the ship was gradually being crushed. You can see the 2004 film starring uh, Kenneth, Kenneth Branagh, who's uh, also Irish. Um, and people were saying, oh no, it's whales. We're hearing the noise of whales under the ship. No, the ship was gradually being crushed by ice. So they had to escape in an open boat. And Shackleton vowed he would keep every man alive. And they went hundreds of miles in uh, these sub-zero temperatures across the sea to South Georgia. Scott had made Shackleton promise before he went to the South Pole, or to the Antar Antarctica rather, that he would not go to South Georgia. And Shackleton gave that pledge. However, in order to save the life of his men, he was obliged to break that promise. And they got to South Georgia, where it was a whaling station, and they were able to feast on whale sausages. So, um, uh, so Robert Falcon Scott never forgave Shackleton for breaking that pledge to, actually, to go to South Georgia. Uh, and Scott then set off on his doomed race against Roald Amundsen, the uh, Norwegian, uh, shortly after Shackleton brought his men back. And astonishingly, Shackleton managed to lose not a single man, despite the incredibly adverse circumstances, the cold, the lack of rations, the mountainous seas, and all the rest of it. And so he came back here to London, and as you can see, he died shortly after the uh, First World War. Indeed, there's a type of plane named after him, the Shackleton, which is a, uh, a plane in the Second World War, a military one. That is Sir Ernest Shackleton.